this is Di. I am at the Northwest Ministry Conference and there was one of the booths I really wanted you guys to see. I'm going to take you inside and I'll let you meet that booth. So here is the booth that I wanted to show you. I'm here with... Dave Anderson. Dave Anderson, and you're with what company? Aria Live Media. Aria Live Media is a new company. We've been around three or four years, but we've been in development mode. Uh, we just launched a new product, the Aria.Live sound system technology, uh, last December, and uh, we're just rolling it out. It's a product that's designed specifically for uh, organizations that rely on volunteers to do their live sound production. We know that live sound can be very complicated and confusing with these big digital consoles or these older analog consoles with a bazillion knobs and faders. And uh, for a lot of volunteers, it's kind of intimidating. So we set out to design a system that was far easier to set up and operate that would allow volunteers to just focus on getting the sound lovely and nice and not worrying about all the plumbing and the patching and the mapping and connecting into the right ports and everything else that so often is uh, confusing and frustrating for volunteers. So the ARIA.Live system basically takes all of the functionality in a big digital mixing console and breaks it up into individual modules that are connected together via a local area network, an Ethernet network. So there is no mixing desk or mixing console anymore. All of the control is done on an iPad, and the, the, the modules are things like this direct inbox, which has an Ethernet connection here and a combo jack here that takes either quarter inch or XLR input. And um, also our microphones, like this one here, that is a network connection, not an XLR connection. Yeah. So inside this microphone is the converter, the preamp, uh, you have equalization, you have gain, all inside of here. And all those parameters that you set and tune up to make it sound just right stay in the microphone. So if you tune up a mic the way your vocalist really likes it, just stick her name on that microphone and anytime she picks it up and plugs it in, it'll sound exactly the way she likes it. Now you don't have to use our microphones with this system. You can use any microphone you want. If you use our DI box, you can plug the existing microphones that you have. You can plug your instruments in here. You can plug your wireless receivers for your wireless microphones in here. So pretty much anything that you have existing as an input can go into one of our DI boxes. We have a mono version here. We also have a stereo version over here with RCA connectors on it. Nice. So you have stereo sources. And then for outputs, we have basically two kinds of outputs. One is what we call a speaker out. So here's one here. And it's rather simple. It just has an XLR line level output from the box and a network connection going in. So the actual mixing happens inside the outputs. They have access to all of the input channels and they do the mix that's specific for the speaker or amp channel that they're connected to. We have one other kind of output, and that's this headphone monitor. So this is for personal monitor mixing. Plug this into the network, plug your headphones into the eighth inch jack here, and you have your own private mix. All 32 channels are available to you to select how much of each thing you want, plus you have your own uh, effects, not everything you want in the mix, okay? okay? And you can control that on your smartphone. So you have full control of your private mix nice. on your smartphone. The front of house guy is using an iPad to mix things. Now, both your mix and his main house mix are available to him, so he can help you with your mix if he wants, oh. or you can do it yourself. Now let me show you how easy, how easy it is to make a third mix on here. I'm going to switch over to this page which shows our output devices. We have a left output, a right output, and one headphone unit for the drum monitor. Sure. Okay, let me put this down for just a second. I'll take this headphone monitor mix. I'll take this Ethernet cable. I'll plug it in anywhere I want, doesn't matter. Pick a port. You want a different port? Let's try a different port. You know, it doesn't matter what port to pick because it's a network. And then I just power up the unit by plugging it in. Everything's powered over Ethernet, so you don't need any other cables, no wall warts and things like that going into it. The box will boot up a little bit here. 
when it does, you'll see I have another headphone monitor over here in the unassigned column. So I could have this close to me at the front of house desk, and I can say, gee, I want to listen to what the drum guy is listening to. So I'll drop that into his mix, and now I can hear exactly what he's hearing. And I can tweak it if I want to, because he's busy with his sticks. He doesn't have hands-free. Right. Or if we're making a new mix, I'll just drag it over to the new mix column, and it'll create a nice new mix, like that. And then I can name it. Let's call this maybe the keyboard mix, or, or keyboard monitor, something like that. Keys. We got the main, the drums, and the key monitors, and I can just toggle between them as I want to, and each one has completely independent controls. So I didn't do any patching or routing, I didn't deal with matrices and things like that. Just drag and drop, make the mixes that you need, and the talent can control their own mixes, or the front of house guy can do it. Because everything plugs into a network, and it doesn't matter what network port things get plugged into, you really can't hook this system up wrong. So for example, I'll prove it. Microphone with a microphone cable. Speaker output here. Take the cable from the speaker, and the cable from the mic, trade places with them. And now? And now, both of them boot back up again, and the system is right back where it was. Nothing has changed. <laughs> so you just don't have to worry about where you plug things in. We have a church that's been using this for almost two years now. And the way they operate is on Sunday mornings when the worship team comes in, everybody goes in and they pick up the mic that has their name on it if they're a vocalist, or the DI box that has their name on it if they're you know, a player, and they pick up a cable or two. They walk onto the stage, they decide where they want to stand that day because it doesn't matter to the sound guy at all. They plug into a floor pocket jack and things pop up on the controller. And the sound guy says, all right, it's very plain, everything's there. All the settings were saved from last week. All the strips are already labeled and everything. They just start playing. It goes from, you know, hour and a half of setup to 10 or 15 minutes. Now, I should point out that these cables are really not recommended for stage use, these plastic cables. What we recommend is a cable like this, it's called an EtherCon cable. Now, most EtherCon cables are stiff. They don't lay flat on the stage. They're hard to roll up. We didn't like that, so we had our own cables made that are nice and soft and flexible. They lay flat, they roll up beautifully. So what I really recommend somebody use instead of that is an EtherCon cable like that. Yeah. Nice and solid, you know, won't break loose on you. Really high quality stuff. You may notice that when I plug in a microphone, there's some lights that come on here. Um, the lights are just showing that we're booting up and getting an IP address now. But uh, once we're done there, uh, the control of these lights is available to the operator. Another handy thing is if you're not sure which fader goes to which mic, you can always change from that setting to um, something called Sparkle. And then it will start flashing. Oh. And you can say, oh, there's the one I'm looking for. What are the different settings that you have used? This is not just for churches. Not just for churches, you're right. Uh, there's a lot of organizations that rely on volunteers to do their sound. Schools in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this installed in several high schools, and they are having great success with it because it allows them to get way more value out of their sound system, and it lets the kids have an opportunity to do it. Turns out you can have as many iPad controller operating at the same time as you want. They all stay in sync, so it's a great way to teach kids how to do sound. It's like driver control, like a driver ed, you like know, driver's ed. for sound. Yeah, yeah. So it's also in um, civic centers, community centers. We have a, a library that has a community room that they use it for small performances and things like that. And we have uh, theaters who are using it. I have to keep cutting out myself because I keep going, wow, and oh, because I've just never seen anything like that. If you watch my videos, you know that we moved recently from a completely analog system to a digital system, but we haven't made this jump into Ethernet. It's a whole nother jump in technology. And then I wanted to ask you about how it sounds. How it sounds. The analog path length of our system is the shortest of any system in the world. And the microphone, for example, it's about that long. <laughs> Capsules here, by the time you get this far, you're digital, okay? 
So it's all digital all the way through, which means that there's no hum or buzz or ground loops and things like that. Now, we set out to make a system that was really convenient and easy and that would have good sound. We used 48 kilohertz sampling at 24 bits. And we had an unusual thing happen when we started installing this at a number of beta sites. People attending the churches or going to the schools would, without knowing that a new sound system had been installed, come up to the guys running the production and say, what's different about the sound tonight? It sounds way better than it ever has before. What did you do different? And the only difference was they were using our sound system instead. Now, we never set out to make a system that was way better sounding than everybody else. It was supposed to be just easier to use and sound neutral. But constantly we hear that the sound is crisp and clear and beautiful and warm. And uh, we're just really proud of that. So I am going to ask him about the hum. The and hum. The hum. Hum, hum, hum. Some of you have followed my trials and tribulations. Um, my bass, being a short scale, has a single a split coil pickup. And that means that it doesn't cancel hum. And um, our sound system at my church, the way it is wired, and I'm sure this happens at other venues besides churches, is that the lighting and the sound system are on the same circuit. And so when the lights go up, the hum goes up and the lights come down, they come down. So rehearsal's great. And then when they flip it up for Sunday, then I get into trouble. And so he's going to talk about the impact um, that a system like this has on hum. There's a couple things going for you that will be better with a digital system like this. One is that the only analog, hum comes through analog stuff. Hum does not come into the digital portion. It's impervious to hum. So the only analog portion, if you're going direct, is your instrument cable. So if you use a good quality instrument cable, direct into a digital DI such as this, that will greatly minimize, probably eliminate the hum. The other thing is that Mixing consoles have, you know, an AC connection and maybe they're on the same circuit or the same breaker panel at least as those dimmer packs. That's really messy and you get some noise coming from that. All of these boxes are powered by PoE, power over Ethernet. The power actually comes out of the Ethernet switch, which if it's in a closet someplace that your IT guy set up, probably is not on the same circuit as your dimmer packs. So you'll probably be better off there too. Does this need to be built into a system or is this something that you could roll out for a Sunday and then roll back up? It Great seems like question. it's not as heavy as analog. Great question. We actually have a number of churches that have it installed and you know, they just need to bring their input devices onto the stage and plug them into any network connection and off they go. We also have a number of churches that are portable churches. They have to go in and set up every single Sunday and because there is no mixing desk or mixing console, just a bunch of these little boxes and some microphones, it's very easy to transport in. And it's very quick to set up because again, it doesn't matter where you plug things in. So the portable churches that we're working with now tell us that their setup time went from like an hour and a half before service to less than 30 minutes. And nobody's, you know, looking yeah. the big case in anymore. A couple of little plastic totes and some cables and you're good. You still have to bring the speakers in. I'm sorry I can't make the speakers get light, but you know, other than that, everything else is light and easy. We're trying to model a wall here, as if you had you know, panels like this on your wall or maybe floor pockets in your stage. Right. But what's behind the curtain? Not much. This is a power over ethernet switch. Uh, it's a 12 porter or something like that, and you can get them from eight ports up to 48 ports. They're on Amazon, they're not very expensive. Um, and then this little guy here is just a Wi-Fi router. It's like 25 bucks, it's just super cheap. And that's really all the back-end infrastructure is. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. God bless.